Meet Jack. Jack is fuming. He can't get paid for the work he has done on a site. Sound familiar? Did you know that the Construction Contracts Act 2013 was introduced in 2016 to ensure prompt payment? The CCA meant the abolishment of pay when paid clauses in construction contracts. Now, contractors and subcontractors must, at a minimum, comply with this Act regarding payment terms and conditions. The CCA covers a broad range of building activities and includes work carried out by professionals such as architects and engineers. But there are times when the Act does not apply. For instance, when the value of the contract is less than €10,000. When the Act does not apply, when it is for a dwelling with a floor area less than 200 square metres where one of the parties lives or intends to live. When the Act does not apply, when it is a contract between a state authority and its partner in a public-private partnership. When the Act does not apply, finally, when it is for a contract of employment. So, for example, if you are a main contractor, the Act's payment terms applies where payment provisions are not provided for in the contract. If you are a subcontractor, the CCA's payment terms always applies unless more favourable terms are offered to the subcontractor. Under the CCA, payments must be made 30 days after the start of the contract, every 30 days following this, and 30 days after the date of final completion. If the project is estimated to last less than 45 days, the payment claim date is 14 days following the completion of the works. For this project length, only one payment claim notice will be submitted. There are three terms to be aware of in relation to the payment process under the CCA. 1. Payment claim date. 2. Payment claim notice. And 3. Payment claim response notice. Payment claim date. This is the date when a payment claim in relation to an amount due is required to be made in the construction contract. The payment claim notice, typically known as an interim payment or payment application or part payment or instalment, must contain the following to be valid. A. The amount being claimed, even if it is zero. B. The period, stage of work or activity. C. The subject matter and D. The basis of the calculation of the amount claimed. Your contract may set out how the payment claim notice is to be delivered and to whom. This should be adhered to. The payment claim notice must be delivered to the payer no later than five days after the payment claim date in each payment cycle. If the payer does not agree with the amounts set out in the payment claim notice, they must respond within 21 days of the payment claim date by sending a payment claim response notice to the payee setting out 1. The reason why the amount in the payment claim is disputed, including any claim for loss or damage and the particulars surrounding this claim. Two, the amount that the payer proposes to pay and how this amount has been calculated. If the amount has not been agreed by the date the payment is due, the payer shall pay the amount they have set out in their response. Where the amount due under the contract is not paid in full on the due date, the company being paid can suspend the work once they give notice under Section 5.2 of the Act. However, this must be served not earlier than the day after which the amount concerned is due, at least seven days before the suspension is intended to begin. Work cannot be suspended if the other party pays or notice has been served by either party under Section 6.2 of the Act to refer the dispute to adjudication. Warning. When work is suspended under the Act, 
the program may be affected. The time period of suspension will be disregarded if the subcontractor's claim is upheld. However, if the claim is not upheld, the other party may be entitled to claim for compensation.